Hello everyone, Hexlex here. We've got some more Master Duel for you guys today. Now right off the bat, I might sound to you, I hopefully should sound uh, better to you, or at least different, because I got my new microphone in this morning. I tested it out shortly after it arrived, and I am very satisfied with the quality of it. Uh, with the old mic out, I hopefully will not be sounding like a robot anymore, or as someone so funnily put in a comment, a DBZ Fusion character. So anyway, with that moving forward, today is February 3rd, the day that I am recording this, which means that we are still fairly early in Season 2. I did manage to make my way up to Platinum 3. Um, with any luck, I've got a whole night of laddering ahead of me, and I'll be able to get to Plat 1 tonight. That's the, that's the goal. We'll see how it pans out. So I've got some replays to share with my climb thus far. Now, I do actually see that paper I just set aside because I'm going to not show uh, a few of these replays. And the reason is that I'm setting aside replays for a video that I've wanted to do and that I've also seen requested a couple of times, which is how to play against Eldritch. How do we play against Eldritch and other stun decks? Uh, I am going to be making a video specifically talking about that. Uh, maybe, ideally, the next video or two. Uh, it should be coming out in the next day or two, but we'll see. We'll see how it pans out. In any case, yep, we can go ahead and get started with this first replay right here. This is one of the ones I am going to show. And I remember this game quite well. This was an extremely satisfying game to play, and you guys are going to see why pretty soon here. Uh, this game is going to be against... I don't... I th I'm pretty sure I did see Drytron Monsters. It's at least a Herald deck. Um, so it's... And I'm pretty sure I do remember seeing Drytron Monsters. Sorry, I'm doing the thing again where I try to predict what's going to happen without knowing it first. I do need to stop doing that. But, yep, we see our opponent's going to immediately pre-prep for the Herald of Perfection. They've got the Diviner, too. This is a bit painful for me because the only hand trap I've got is Max C. And ideally, I would have an Imperm to stop this Diviner. We are going to max C in response to the Ritual spell, just so we can at least get, like, some amount of disruption in, but... Or not disruption in this case, but... So we can get a draw in, basically. Yeah, here comes the Herald of Perfection. There's the Imperm, you know, of course, right on time. Not that it really would have mattered, our opponent would have been able to summon Herald anyway, but... Yep, yeah, our opponent's going to Dawn to get back the Ben 10. And then they also yeah, are going to get Ben 10's effect to add an Eva, which is going to be even more annoying. It's funny because Eva on paper, especially with it being banned recently in the TCG, you kind of read it and you're like, well, that doesn't seem so bad. But if you play, yeah, you play against Drytron, uh, and then you realize. So we're going to try to imperm, but of course our opponent's going to negate it. I'm just trying to draw out my opponent's negates now. I actually genuinely did consider conceding here, but, you know, I decided, hey, I'm gonna follow my own advice, and I'm just gonna play this game out. Like, even though our opponent's got, you know, a Herald of Perfection with five cards in hand, and we know one of them is Eva, let's, let's play it out, you know? Let's see what happens. So, I'm just gonna be playing into these negates kind of the same way I would be playing into a bunch of back row, which, of course, I'll elaborate more on this. <clears throat> when I make my video about playing against Eldritch and other stun decks, when I'm playing in into a bunch of face-down cards, or in this case, a Herald of Perfection, a bunch of negates, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to draw responses for my opponent while also committing as little as possible uh, with each individual play. So we opened with Imperm, right? Obviously, not only to try and negate the Herald, to draw a negate, but also because I didn't really commit to any of the play there. Uh, and then you can see we like then we tried fractal, okay, and then they negate that. Okay, we still have our normal summon, so we can nervel into the almirage. Okay, they negated that obviously, and then we can, at the end we can desires, uh, and obviously they're gonna negate that too. But again, we're just we're like each card we throw out is just a little feeler. Now here I threw out the revolt, even though I can't actually, if I remember right, I can't actually even get anything really great with it. Yeah, because I only had two tri types in my grave, but. I thought maybe if I flipped it here, my opponent might just get scared and negate it. And sure enough, they did. So at this point, our opponent's running low on cards. And their board itself is not particularly threatening. I'm going to go ahead and summon Nerval here, and I'm going to activate Nerval's effect. And of course, our opponent's going to negate it, but by destroying our Nerval, we're going to get Nerval's search as well. 
And hey, look, our opponent didn't negate it. So now I know my opponent's out of negates. Like, I know this card, they're not able to negate it. So I'm going to set a revolt. I'm immediately going to flip it during the draw phase. And this is actually something... Okay, I wish it was here in the replay, but you know how there's like the little button you can click here that says auto offer on that determines like when you can chain to cards? I definitely clicked it on here, right? Because I wanted to flip revolt during my opponent's draw phase when they draw. I wanted to do that specifically because again from last turn I knew that this card was not a fairy so that they couldn't negate my thing. And if this card was a card that could search a fairy, I wanted to be able to get my revolt off before my opponent could search for their fairy monster. I really could have done it if it was like a spell, I could have done it in response to the spell being activated, but I didn't want to take any chances at all, so I'm like, I'm going to revolt during my opponent's draw phase. So I just wanted to point that out that I did that here. And yeah, you can see we're going to flip, we're going to flip revolt. Um, and again, we can't go for like a Shuri like we'd like to, but we are going to be able to go for Rugal, which is stronger than anything my opponent's got out on the board. Uh, I'm going to get the Nervo effect, and we can see here our opponent top decked Ash, which is completely fine. I, I still have the Fractal in hand, so I'm not particularly concerned about it. And at this point, yeah, my opponent can't really run over my Rugal, so it looks like they're just going to link away their things into a Nightmare Unicorn. And obviously they know that we know that their Herald of Perfection is no longer live. So that's that's why they're, you know, willing to link it away here. Our opponent's gonna use Nightmare Unicorn's effect. I'm going to respond with Rugal to get a defensive Nerval just so I don't take any damage. And now, as you can see, even though we started off in a completely hopeless situation, by sticking through it, we actually managed to completely play around our opponent's board. Or not, not even around, we played through our opponent's negates, all of those Herald negates, and now they're left with nothing. So here we're going to use Fractal to go into Ferragite, and we're going to go into a nice Zodiac combo since we drew the Whiptail as well. Obviously we were able to easily deal with our opponent's Nightmare Unicorn, and our opponent doesn't really have anything... I mean, they have a Drytron engraved, so they they do have the potential... Oh, I was going to say, why isn't it scrolling? They do have a Drytron engraved, so they can potentially set up some amount of plays, but I'm not particularly concerned about what they can do at this point. We're going to get our Dryden out, and we're just going to start smacking them. We're going to make a 4 material Zeus in addition to that as well. And yeah, like I said, at this point, I'm not you know particularly concerned with really anything my opponent can do. And we're going to link these away into Rugal. And yeah, I mean, at this point we pretty much have it. Like, there's no way our opponent can come back, really. They're going to activate the Cyber Emergency, I'm like, sure, okay. So they are going to get to start, like, doing some amount of Drytron stuff, but... I mean, we've got the Zeus, we can cut them off whenever it gets to be, you know, like, enough. <clears throat> I do wish I would have had some out of negation, would have been ideal, but yeah, as you can see, our opponent's not really able to do anything. So yeah, very satisfying duel. A prime example of the of why I say you should never ever concede. Because again, I really almost conceded like at the start of that game. I saw the Herald, I saw the Eva get added, and I was like, well what can I do? I looked at my hand, I was like, I can't play through this, can I? But we were able to. Okay, next game here. Let's see what we're up against. Okay, looks like we get the first turn. We've got the Fractal and some Kits, so we've got a nice setup play here. <clears throat> yeah, so actually one of the comments pointed out in response to one of my first videos of Season 2 here, that since I'm playing the Double Dragons now, uh, if I don't need Ferragy, I can go into Double Dragons in addition to my Appalachia. Which, <clears throat> excuse me, I wasn't used to playing with Double Dragons yet, so I didn't even realize that at first, but, so thank you. I, I really need to start writing down these people who leave these comments that I mentioned. I'm going to try to start doing that. But yes, thank you to that comment there very, very much. I think two people actually left that comment now that I think about it. Thank you to anyone who, who suggested that combo, because, uh, holy cow, it is very useful. Um, okay, so this is... So you might be like, oh, I thought you were going to save videos against Eldritch players. This is technically an Eldritch deck, but when I looked at the actual deck list, it's definitely a Shinryu deck. Um, it's not like a stun deck. I know when people say, how do I play against Eldritch, they're specifically asking, like, how do I play against these decks that set, like, four face-down cards in the first turn, 
and then they're flipping like skill drain rivalry goes in match there can only be one um, I, I know that that's what people are referring to and I'm going to make a deck or I'm going to make a video talking about how to uh, play against those decks specifically again when I actually looked at my opponent's deck list I saw they didn't really have those cards it's more of a dedicated sh uh, Shirin I said Shinri here that's technically not right uh, it's it's this archetype um, it's not an Eldritch deck, they're just playing some Eldritch cards. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, this is a fairly standard setup. You know, that Double Dragon plus Appalachia put in work, definitely. Um, and we're able to follow up with the Revolt, which again is just, you know, the, the biggest strength of Tri-Brigade Zodiac, right? It's just that, you know, we're always able to, like... Not only are we able to set up a board of Negates and play through a bunch of Negates... We just need one card. Like, as long as we set up a revolt, we can flip that on our opponent's turn, and that one card will instantly just, like, turn the whole game around for us. It's kind of nuts, like, just how insane revolt is. Okay, so... Next replay is gonna be... Right? Let me make sure I clicked on the right one. Okay, we're skipping these two. We're gonna go to this one here. And as you can see, I do have another loss in. You can see it's a 15-turn duel. Um... That was an interesting back and forth, which is why I kept that one. Although this this duel and that one I might put in fast forward because I saw they were a lot of turns. Like this one I think was 11 turns. Oh yeah, this game. So, oh my god, this is such a weird game, right? So you can see I've got like a really good going second hand, but I opted to go first, so I just pass. My opponent throws away their max C. I can't really discern why. It must have been a misclick or something, but... I'm going to put this in fast forward a little bit here. Okay, so we can see from the Draconic Diagram that it's going to be True Kings. I'm going to negate their search for sure. Uh, and then I'll Harpies Feather Duster their cards away. Now, they are able to get a Tribute Zone off, but I'm like, okay, this is totally fine. Uh, well, it's not totally fine, right? Because, as you can see, we're kind of like uh, hurting for something here, anything. Ah, yeah, I remember this game now. So yeah, our opponent's going to get to summon a couple more monsters um, by tributing their their other monster and their spell and trap. Okay, so I'm going to get off fast forward here. So I decided to lightning storm their monsters instead of their one back row. <coughs> because I feel like their monsters are kind of more of a threat at this point. Plus, they're going to get more searches with the Majesty Maiden. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to get rid of it. Now, oh, their last card that was called by. So when we try to finally set up a combo by pitching Kit with Chaos. We get called by, and I'm like, crap, I have a Chaos on attack mode, I've only got a thousand life points. Our opponent's playing, you know, True Drag, True King, like, there's no way, like, I'm gonna lose here, right? I set my, my both my revolts just to try to scare my opponent a little bit here. Our opponent's gonna have this spell, which lets them shuffle back their cards and then draw. But by the grace of God alone, somehow... Somehow our opponent did not have a play with those three cards. Now, okay, this was a bit, not a bit, this was very amateurish of me. My opponent, I'm going to pause here for a second. My opponent, uh, or rather, I flipped Revolt during my opponent's end phase because I got the prompts to activate it. Like, don't ever rely on that because obviously I only had the one kit banished. I wasn't going to be able to make anything. So, yeah, I kind of just wasted that Revolt for no real reason. Now, here my opponent's going to max C when I normal summon kit, which is actually, you know, that's a good play on their part. Kind of? I mean, I don't know. I feel like, again, I want to wait till my opponent commits more, because here, I'm just going to smack them and pass. I know they're in top decking mode. I know they're looking for a top deck, so I'm not going to give them any draws off of Maxi. And here you see me Tribute Summon Nibiru. Tribute Summon Nibiru was actually, like, the best play here, randomly. I was looking through my extra deck, and I was like, you know, with what I have, like, what am I going to make, a Ferrogeet or a Bear Run? Those aren't really going to do anything. I'm just going to tribute them for Nibiru and smack my opponent for 3,000. <clears> and yeah, now you can see we can flip the Revolt for three cards. We're going to get Rugal and we're able to end the game right here. So that duel actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. I guess I did put it fast forward for a good bit of it. But yeah, no, this was a really interesting game because, again, I opened like a complete going second hand even though I was going first and I just kind of had to deal with it. But another testament to why you shouldn't concede too early. That game did not look winnable, <clears throat> especially when my opponent put me down to a thousand, but we did manage to pull through. Okay, so the next duel we're looking at is this one here. 
Um, actually, let me actually take a look. I don't remember the list. Ah, yeah. So as you can see, my opponent's just playing like a stun anti-meta deck. I would have saved this, you know, replay for the actual stun video, but I do end up losing. Maybe I should, any, well, I guess I'm playing it now, so it's a little bit too late, but, you know, in the how to play against stun, I wouldn't, I'd like to show only wins, ideally. Normally, I'm not too concerned with that, as long as they're good games, I'm fine with showing them, but... Yeah, with that in particular, I would very much like to show wins. Yeah, I'll throw this fast forward here. So you can see, we get to, to go first. We get the Fractal combo off. We get to add Karis. I'm going to throw in a Desires here because I've already got the Revolt. I draw Ash and Imperm. By all accounts, this is looking like a really good, you know, standard opening hand, right? We've got the Ancient Warrior, or the Ancient, uh, yeah, Warriors of Double Dragon. We've got the Appalachia, we've got like Maxi and Ash. I'm like, this is an ideal start, like I can do any better. Our opponent's gonna have Harpy's Feather Duster, which is always like a little bit annoying, but you know, cause I have to play the Revolt now instead of later when I would like to, but it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. What is kind of a big deal is I'm a little concerned about Lightning Storm. Like I do recognize that at this stage a Lightning Storm would wreck me, but my opponent's got something else in mind, which is Banisher of the Radiance plus Moon Mirror Shield. And this actually randomly ended up completely countering my Double Dragon, because you might have seen that and be like, well, wait, Hexlux, why didn't you Double Dragon to bounce the Vanisher or something? So, Double Dragon Lords, right? Quick effect. You can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard, then target one face of card your opponent controls. So sending a card to the graveyard is the cost. Since Banisher of the Radiance banishes anything that's sent, I can't pay my costs because I can't put a card in the graveyard. So this banisher actually ends up completely negating my double dragon, which is like... I think that definitely factored into my loss here. Like, if I would have been able to respond with double dragon, obviously I would have been able to win. But, I mean, obviously there's also the whole, like, it's whatever. It's coulda, woulda, shoulda, right? It's gonna happen with you, Gio. But yeah, so that banisher plus moon mirror shield just randomly ended up being a really scary combination. Our opponent's going to have Compulsory for our Appalachia, which is a little annoying, but we get a 2 Material Zeus. Okay, so I actually have to explain this to you, and this was actually ended up being a misplay on my part. Um, I was kind of convinced my opponents had a Nibiru for some reason. I should have especially at this point realized that what they had was likely not Nibiru. But the reason I only put 2 Materials on my Zeus here was to play around Nibiru. Um, yeah, if I had put four materials on it like I should have. Obviously I would have, like, well, I would have won, right? I, during my opponent's end phase there, I would have activated Zeus, I would have destroyed the Inspector of Order, I would have destroyed the back row, and then I would have won. I also, this ends up being a slight misplay later, that, so what I did was I was attacking Max C, with, uh, the face down with Max C, to see if I could hit it with, uh, kill it with Borbo. Uh, it was Inspector Border, so I had to kill it with Zeus. And then I did uh, the damage with Borbo, putting my opponent down to a thousand. Now, if we look at our desires from earlier, we actually ended up banishing like a whole bunch of our Zodiac pieces and like our tankies and stuff. So, like, I counted during the game itself. We're like out of monsters here, and yeah, as you can see, we conceded with our opponent at five hundred. We did get one attack in with another Max C. So, unfortunately, I did pass up on two opportunities to win that duel. Which is a little bit sad, but in the moment, I thought they were the right play. Again, the first time I was playing around Nibiru, which I really should have been playing around Nibiru. <clears throat> I don't know, again, I don't know why I was, especially later in the game, but it is what it is. It's going to happen. Okay, so I don't want to I don't want to watch that duel yet. Let's go ahead and go into this replay right here. This is a two-turn replay, which normally I don't keep those, because they're usually pretty boring, but maybe this one was a bit more interesting. Or maybe I just left it over. We'll see. Okay, so thankfully our opponent gets to go first here, because this is definitely not a good first turn hand. We do have the Maxi and the Imperm, so it's a pretty good going second hand. Ah, uh, yeah, we can see our opponent's playing Ad Emancipator here. Um, we're gonna definitely Maxi in response to the Ad Emancipator Researcher. I don't remember if I've shown a replay against that Emancipator yet. I've definitely played against them before. So 
So our opponent's immediately going to Synchro into the Herald, summon it, and pass, so as not to play more into our Max C. I really don't blame them, especially a deck like Adam Emancipator. They're extremely combo heavy. Like, if you thought Tri-Brigade Lyrilisk had a lot of combos, holy cow, Adam Emancipator is the combo deck. So they really can't do a whole lot without playing super hard into Max C, which is, I'm sure, why my opponent Herald of Arc Lighted and pass. Now, I do have to imperm the Herald of Arc Light because its effect will banish anything, any monster sent from the hand or main deck to grave. Obviously, we don't want that. And it's also got an effect where our opponent contributed it to negate one of our card, or yeah, one of our card effects. I don't particularly want that to happen either, obviously. So, yeah, we gotta imperm. Thankfully, we have the imperm, but yeah, we gotta imperm the Herald of Arclight before going into our combo here. And as you can see at this point, our opponent's just gonna concede. They, they recognize, like, it's pretty much over. Alright, last replay here. Let's get right into it. I was gonna say, I thought I had more spicy duels saved, but I actually remembered the one that I'm thinking of in particular was against Elder Lich, so we actually get to watch that spicy duel a little bit later. So, we're playing a fairly standard opening hand here. Our opponent's going to maxi into Fractal, which, once again, I don't really understand why people do that. As you can see, I've got a Chaos in my hand. If my opponent had waited until I was to maxi, until I'd activated Chaos' effect, I would have been much more committed. Um, additionally, my opponent could have waited until I... If I was didn't have Chaos, my opponent could have waited until I summoned Fractal and activated Fractal's effect. So, uh, handy tip for playing against Trizu. If anyone watching is not a Trizu player, um, handy tip, don't max C in response to like a Fractal or like a Kit or something, you know? And now, okay, here's the thing. If I, if your opponent like goes Normal Summon Kit or Normal Summon Nerval, they're probably about to like send it away for Almirage. So max C in response to that Normal Summon is actually really, really good if they don't have anything else set up and they're about to go into Almirage. But if your opponent's like discarding Fractal, or like activating Kit or Nerval's effect. Again, there's no reason to maxi just yet. Um, this deck really kind of has to commit with special summons with their effects, so uh, you can afford to wait. So yeah, our opponent's got the Lightning Storm. They're gonna hit our Revolt, which is again slightly annoying. Although I'm not really concerned here because we've got Rugal. So if our opponent plays anything we want to banish, we can just activate Rugal since we didn't use Shurig's effect yet. We can just activate Rugal and then go straight into that. Now our opponent's going to activate Neuron Network in response to that. I'm going to summon Nerval and Banish Network. But naturally they've got two in hand because of course they do. So they're going to get their Neuron combo off anyway. And I don't think I've shown a replay against this deck yet. I've played against it a couple of times. You might have seen it on ladder too. It doesn't seem to be particularly popular with Western players. It seems to be more popular with OCG players. But yep, this is the Neuron deck and this is the main play here. You know, they summon, they activate Neuron Network, they send the spell, they send the Fork Seeds, which uh, end up doubling up on their attack points. Normally they're up to 16,000 at this point, but we had the Rubble. I activate the effect just because. Our opponent's going to play this Infinite Track Link 3, which I've never seen this thing before. It takes three Xyz monsters, it's unaffected by anything but Xyz monsters. Uh, we're going to get to Nibiru here, which is nice. Yeah, it's nice that I actually get to show games where I, <laughs> where I not only summon Nibiru through Nibiru's effect, but also, like, um, through tribute summoning it, apparently. Alright, so from here we're gonna do some fairly standard combo stuff. Now, our opponent's Affinity Track card looks scary, but... Because it says, you know, unaffected by card effects. Ah, except it sees monsters. Hmm, so... If only we had some Zodiac cards. And yeah, as soon as we're going into Chakanane, our opponents realize, they're like, go, oh, they can blow up my Infinite Track thing. And they're gonna go ahead and give the Concede. Alright, so that is going to do it for this video. Like I said, we'll look in the near future for a playing against Eldritch video, Eldritch and other stun decks. And also, ideally in the near future, look for a me hitting Plat 1 video. Uh, that'll come soon regardless anyway, but with any luck, it'll come tonight. So, um, in any case, thank you so much, as always, for watching. 
your viewership seriously means a lot to me. Like, it's funny, I was telling my friend this, actually. Funnily enough, okay, small side anecdote right at the end of the video, right? Uh, my, I was talking with a friend the other day about, like, just dreams and aspirations, and one thing I told them was, you know, it, it's this is gonna sound kind of stupid, but I've always kind of wanted to, like, blow up on YouTube a bit. And I shit you not, it was a few days later that I posted that first Trizu video, and then I actually started blowing up, so, um... Like, as cheesy as this sounds, sorry, that's my phone going off. As cheesy as this sounds, like, you guys are legit kind of making my dreams come true. Uh, and I super, super, super appreciate that. Um, but I've rambled on long enough. This is Hexlex, signing out. Have a great day.